AE Systems recently unveiled a proposal to add additional VLS cells to the Hunter class frigates being built for the Royal Australian Navy. Here we examine the background to the requirement for more missiles and the potential opportunities for Type 26 customer nations. Up arming down under. The Australian Defence Strategic Review DSR, concluded that the country needs to change from its reactive posture and adopt a more proactive strategy intended to defeat potential threats further away from its northern coast. In naval terms, this will require an enhanced lethality surface combatant fleet, that complements a conventionally armed, nuclear-powered submarine fleet, is now essential given our changed strategic circumstances. The nine Type 26 derivative Hunter-class frigates that are about to start construction are intended primarily for anti-submarine warfare, arguably the finest ASW combatant design available in the world right now. The last three Australian Defence White Papers had emphasised ASWS submarines continue to proliferate in the Asia-Pacific region. Subsequent to selecting the Hunter design, the RAN has started down the long road to acquisition of SSNs which will eventually increase ASW capability significantly. Critics in Australia see the future fleet as having too great an emphasis on defence against underwater threats and a lack of offensive capability, especially in the form of anti-ship and land attack cruise missiles. An echo of the complaint that Royal Navy warships are like porcupines, well-defended herbivores with limited offensive capabilities. The Australian Strategic Policy Institute ASPI, has even called for the Hunter order to be reduced from nine ships to six because the current plans would result in an unbalanced fleet bias towards ASW. In addition to the Hobart class, 3 XAW destroyers, the remaining ships should be replaced by multi-purpose frigates or destroyers with greater missile capacity to support the DSR requirement of impactful projection. The RAN is conducting a review of its surface fleet which will be published in 2024 and will set out how it may be reconfigured to meet the changing strategic goals. As the frigate program, along with a new class of corvettes, are the centerpieces of the future fleet, plans for the Hunter class are likely to evolve in some direction. In the meantime at the recent Indo-Pacific Naval Maritime Expo in Sydney, various manufacturers were scrambling to show off new heavily armed combatant designs ranging from OPVs with anti-ship missiles to corvettes and frigates groaning with VLS cells and weapon canisters. Despite the Hunter class being the best solution for the core requirements originally set by the RAN, the program has been the subject of criticism and attempts to undermine it. Navadia even went directly to the Commonwealth government offering to build a second batch of ASW-oriented Hobarts, based on a 20-year-old hull, 
claiming they could be in the water before the first hunter. Delays to starting hunter construction have mainly centered around the additional top weight of the C42 modular active phase array radar antenna. Significantly superior to the Artisan of the RN Type 26, the domestically developed Seifer was specified as the RAN once increased anti-air warfare capability for its prime ASW combatants. An additional 18-month postponement to cutting steel was agreed by all parties in 2021 due to COVID and the complexity of RAN-specific changes including the radar and combat system. To address the top weight issue, the beam will be increased by 0.6 meters over the reference design. Even small changes to the dimensions of a ship involve significant recalculation and work for the naval architects. However, the delay is undoubtedly beneficial to industry allowing more time for the Osborne shipyard to develop, work on prototypes and build up workforce skills which should make for more efficient construction in the long run. Bays are confident the program is on track, the first three hunters are on contract and likely to be delivered as planned.